Tonight, a remarkable hour of television. Gabby Petito's father, Joe Petito, joins me live, along with three other parents who've suffered the worst loss, the worst pain any parent can fathom. Beth Holloway, Aaron Runyon, John Walsh. They know the shoes in which Joe now walks. Tonight, they share with him their grief, their guidance, and their lifelong search for peace. It's all straight ahead on Banfield. Hello and welcome to Banfield. It has been another roller coaster day of news in the Gabby Petito case, a case that has gripped this nation. The parents of the man on the run finally emerged from their house today and decided to help in the search. Chris Laundry, Brian's father, jumped in his red pickup and drove the 13 miles to the Carlton Reserve to point out their son Brian's favorite trails. That's according to their lawyer, who once again has changed the timeline of what the Laundries knew and when the Laundries knew it. The couple now says the day after Brian supposedly went hiking, that would be Monday, September 13th, they found his silver Mustang at the reserve in the parking lot with an abandoned citation on the window. Two problems. For weeks, they've maintained that Brian went hiking on Tuesday, September 14th, which any parent can tell you would have been a devastating day. Your son has been gone for 24 hours. You discover his abandoned car. It is hard to believe it was just a date they simply forgot. Second, usually takes about five days before a car is cited as abandoned. And by their timeline in Northport, he'd only been there a day. So when did Brian really leave that little yellow house? Maybe as early as September 9th? Well, that would certainly present a whole other timeline and maybe a whole other search. And let's face it, when it comes to the Petito case, we all want answers and justice. But multiply how you feel right now by infinity. You won't even get close to how the Petito family feels. Grief wrapped in anger and confusion, maybe even guilt, and all of it often on public display. My guests tonight are all members of what John Walsh has deemed the worst club in America, parents who have lost their children to unspeakable violence. Erin Runyon lost her five-year-old daughter, Samantha, in 2002. Samantha was kidnapped from her own front yard in Orange County, California, and found dead the next day, 50 miles away. Her killer was arrested two days after that and now is serving a life term in San Quentin after originally being given the death penalty. Beth Holloway lost her daughter, Natalie, in 2005. And as you probably remember, Natalie was on a high school graduation trip to Aruba when she failed to show up for the flight home. Though suspects were ID'd almost immediately, the investigation turned into a cruel and fruitless odyssey that led to no one ever facing charges and Natalie's body never even being found. And John Walsh lost six-year-old Adam in 1981. Adam disappeared from a Sears store in Florida, Hollywood, Florida. Two weeks later, police found Adam's head in a drainage canal more than 100 miles away. Here, too, a suspect was caught. He confessed. He recanted. Evidence was tested. Evidence was lost. And in 1996, Adam's probable killer died in prison, serving life for six other murders. Aaron Runyon, Beth Holloway, John Walsh, I want to welcome all of you. And I want to also welcome to this conversation Joe Petito, father of Gabby. There is a lot of wisdom in this group, and it's our hope tonight that, Joe, you can share in the knowledge and the experience of your fellow guests. So I'm just going to start off, Joe, with a question I hope you're getting a lot these days, and that is how are you doing? How is your family doing? Um, it's been kind of a whirlwind, you know, the, with, with all the media stuff that's been going on, but, um, you know, we, we actually just got back to our house in Vero Beach, so now the, you know, the grieving process can really start. So, it's, uh, it's, today was a rough day, and it's, 
I imagine there's going to be a lot more of those before they're, you know, they, they become good. So we'll see what happens. Is it any consolation, although I, I can't imagine what consolation even feels like, to know that you are not alone in your journey? It, no, it's not a consolation, but it's, it's, it is appreciated. You know, as of, as of right now, maybe later it will be, but as of right now, I mean, listen, I got, there's a lot of support. We have a, a great support group, which I don't know if, if everyone else had, but um, we're able to kind of lean on each other, which is, which is great because there is four of us, you know, and then family and friends and social media has been crazy, you know, in terms of supportive, you know, so um, social media wasn't as prevalent as it was, you know, today as it was uh, back when all the other guests uh, had, had their worst day of their lives, so. John Walsh, um, you have become the face of fighting crime in America. Um, I don't think there's anyone who doesn't know your story and why you embarked on the mission that you did to catch people who've done wrong. I think if anyone has sage advice for Joe Petito, it would, it would without question be you. Is there something that you would like to start off the conversation saying? Well, as you said earlier, Joe and his family have joined the Horrible Club. Myself and the other two ladies on tonight belong to the parents of murdered children. And I would say this to Joe. I've been watching him. He's, he's handling it in his family with a lot of dignity and a lot of poise. It's the worst thing that you can imagine to happen. And I would say to him that you just, a couple of harsh things that you have to realize is that pretty soon, Brian, dirty laundry, and I call the laundries dirty laundry because they are so dirty. He's just a coward that beat to death, probably beat to death a beautiful young girl. But you've got to be strong because this is already starting to drop out of the news cycle. I've seen it on every missing child case that I've worked on. Elizabeth Smart, the FBI, gave up on her and told Ed and Lois Smart that she was dead in the desert. They'd never find her body and they should have a memorial. And Ed Smart said to me, John, you, you, should we give up? I said, no. I, I profiled her seven more times, 17 times on America's Most Wanted. Found out the guy who took her, put the word out in a couple spot, watched America's Most Wanted, the 17th episode, and spotted her alive in Sandy, Utah. But the harsh reality is that that I believe the public and is going to be the key in social media in catching this horrible coward and his despicable parents who are going to pay someday. They truly are dirty, the dirty laundries. I can't believe this guy's going out searching. Where was he trying to help before? It's just a giant ruse. I said it that there was not, he was never in that swamp. And they, they spent a million and a half dollars of Florida taxpayers' money and gave him four or five more days to get ahead. That, that Johnny Cochran wannabe Steve Bertolino, what a piece of crap lawyer he is. But anyway, I say to Joe and his family, murders of ch children's families wind up with terrible problems. I learned one thing, be kind and loving. You'll have a good day, your wife will have a bad day. Your family will be up one day, they'll be down. Stay healthy, get your sleep, because you're going to be the guy that's going to keep this story. You and Gabby's mother and your new wife and Gabby's new husband, it's going to fall on you to keep her, keep this guy's face in, in, in the media. That's how we find missing children. 80% of missing children are found because of pictures and on the media. I caught 140, 1,422 of uncatchable guys that cops couldn't catch because of the public. We recovered 61 missing children. It's the public, television, social media that will break this case. So I'm saying to Joe and his family, be strong. You're still going to have to battle to keep Brian's face out there. You know, he could stay out there for a long time. But I'll tell you what, that lawyer and those parents gave him such a head start. He left that house after they scrubbed the van. And when daddy bought the camper top and they went out with daddy and mommy and the neighbors went, why would these parents, why would the la dirty laundries take their son in a tiny camper? Well, they took him to drop him off somewhere. That's my philosophy. We've gotten a lot of good tips. A lot of them, one of Gabby's former friends called up and said, nobody's talking about the fact that Brian said 
that he spent three months living out of a backpack on the Appalachian Trail. I think they maybe brought him up through Alabama. The father probably did in that notorious camper, because when the camper came back in the pickup truck, he wasn't there. But they gave him a head start, I think, to Mexico. Could have gone across Alabama or across Louisiana. I caught 47 guys in Mexico. You can walk right across the border and head forever. I'm sure his parents got him as much money as they could. They got him burner phones that are untraceable. And uh, I, I hate to say it, I love cops. 122 of them were killed in the line of duty so far this year, but they dropped the ball. He was never in that house. And that lawyer sending everybody into that swamp. That's so bullshit. Let me, but Joe and his let family. Me ask. You, 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 yeah, I was just going to say, you know, um, while, you know, while having to, to go through the process that all four of you have gone through, and that is to finding justice and finding resolution, and that word everyone always uses, closure, which I, pr I really truly don't believe exists. Beth Holloway, no 15 no years. Yeah, 15 years, Beth, um, since Natalie did not make that flight. And there's no closure for you. And, and I just wonder about the process that you went through, that, you know, the Klieg lights that were glaring for so long, and what your sage wisdom is as Joe begins his journey. Well, first off, I have to just say to Joe that, I mean, Joe, you're, you just made my heart just sank and took me back to 2005 when you said, you started off with, you You haven't even had time to grieve yet. And the reason why, and you said it, you're just putting up the fight for justice and for finding answers. And I just know how hard that is and how hard those steps are. But I just commend you for staying, standing so strong and and knowing that there will be a time for grief later. And, and, and now, though, you're in the fight, as I said, the fight for answers and the fight for justice. And, and I'm just so... I know it's hard for you to come on camera and to and to put ourselves out there. You know, this is not something that we signed up to do. We have no skills with it, and and I know it's you know it's hard because you want to just be able to grieve, but that grief time does come later. And when people talk about closure, you know, there's there's never closure, and you can there is no time frame that you can put on this because we will never get over the loss of losing our loved ones. That that never happens. So I think what it's about, though, is what you're doing, Joe, and that is standing strong, staying focused, and you're being proactive now. You know, and I think when these tragedies first occur in our families, we're reactive to all the chaotic tips and leads and running around. But, Joe, I mean, now it's, it's proactive that you are, and it's, it's hard to make that transition and just standing strong and just knowing that the time for healing, it, it, does, it does come later. And like I said, there, we're never going to get over the loss of losing our loved ones. Our scars will be deep, and they will remain with us forever in our hearts and in our souls and in our minds. But, you know, those scars in time, with all the good work that you're doing and, and on behalf of Gabby and seeking justice for answers, they do. All this you're doing and will continue to do, it does help blur our deep scars. So... Being proactive, you know, doing everything you can, meeting with poster development and, and just staying active and involved with the FBI and communicating and just being the best advocate you can for Gabby is, is just, I just feel like that's just what we as parents do. We just want to dig in and, you know, we, we want to lay down and to grieve, but, you know, the time is just not there for us to do that in the fight for justice and answers. It's, um, I, I've been so um, floored, Joe, by your resilience in so early in the case, uh, getting the GabbyBetito.org foundation out there and known and, and telling people that it's your mission to make this have meaning. Um, and your three co um, guests tonight ha have done the same thing. And in this program, we're going to go over all of the good that the four of you um, have done and, and are doing. And Aaron, um, you know, it's been said that, you know, everybody grieves differently. And families, uh, you know, just, you know, have a Thanksgiving dinner table and you can tell everybody has a different mood at any moment of the day. But in your grief as a family, grieving differently, tell me about the process that a family will go through as opposed to an individual. 
It is, first of all, I just have to give Joe all my love and just know that there are so many millions of us who are thinking of your family and um, applauding the strength that you've shown and the unity that you've shown in the worst circumstance imaginable. So um, I was really happy to hear you say that you had a really good support network because it, it is essential. Um, everybody does grieve, not just differently, but separately. It is a very personal, I, I think it's a sacred process. Um, we all have our own connection. And for each person, their, their grief is going to look different. It's going to feel different. They're, it will manifest in different ways. And to be able to be supportive of one another while you're all going through it alone and together is, it takes a lot of strength, um, but it's also, there's beauty in that. There is beauty in that, and I like to believe that our little girls, um, they, they see it, they feel it, they want it. They, that is the best way that we could possibly honor them, is to take care of one another and to take care of ourselves um, through this process. I think you all are doing a magnificent job. Um, and I, was, I applaud you starting the foundation. I know I didn't realize how soon after Samantha was abducted that my family started the Joyful Child Foundation in her honor. And I didn't know it at the time, but it gave me a way to be able to take Samantha into my everyday in the new normal um, without me dwelling in the past. It gives us a way to focus all of that energy and passion and I'm right there with you. We have to give it purpose because it's senseless. So it's up to us to create purpose out of something so senseless. And, and we're looking at some of those that. pictures, and Aaron, I of your that. foundation. That's what's on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. The the website, The Joyful mm -hmm. Child. I, I have to say to all four of you that in, in researching for this program tonight, I was so buoyed by the work that you have all done and Joe, the work that you're embarking on. So just quickly before we go to break, um, Aaron Runyon's uh, website is The Joyful Child and John Walsh, you'll all know, he and his family um, were the foundational um, purpose behind the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, the work that that organization has done. And Beth Holloway, uh, you started the Natalie Holloway Resource Center at the National Museum of Crime and Punishment in Washington. These are, these are remarkable feats that really have yielded good in society. And I know, Joe, that's important to you. So when we come back, we're going to talk about the good that can come, the meaning that can be found, despite the horror and the club that John Walsh nails it. It's the club you never want to be in and you never invited the membership. We're back right after this. Welcome back to our special program. I want to remind everyone um, we are doing something special tonight uh, in the wake of the developments in the Gabby Petito case. It is important to remember what's at the center of this case, and it is that young woman, Gabby, and her family, and how they are trying to process their new normal. And to that end, we've invited Aaron Runyon, Beth Holloway, so. and John Walsh to join us and have a conversation with Joe Petito. Um, Joe, you know, you and I talked off camera earlier today about the new normal that you're in. Um, you are so early in the journey. Is there any specific advice? Are there any particular questions um, that you can even think of at this early stage uh, that these three um, fellow club members may be able to, to help you with? And listen, I, I know the, the basics. I should be getting sleep, you know, uh, eating more. Um, take time for me, you know, but is there other things that I should be paying attention to? You know, it's, I mean, we have people talk to the kids and, you know, myself and my wife, obviously, because trying to process this takes more than just one person. But I, I'd be asking, is there, is there, are there things that I'm missing at that point? 
You know, Beth, you have um, a, a son, right? You know, named Matthew. Um, that that was Natalie's older brother. I mean, you had to do what Joe is doing now, and the family. They they have to deal with their other children and try to make sense of this for the other kids. The same with John Walsh. But Beth, just maybe touch on that for Joe and and that, you know, that task. Well, when there are other siblings involved and other family members, you do have to be conscientious of that. But a lot of times, and I think I'm hearing from Joe to say that they've got a pretty good network and to help to nurture this, you know, the family, which is so important because I think Joe's focus is, like he's saying, he's kind of, you tend to want to neglect yourself because you feel like you're in such a fight for justice and answers. But in order to seek the best justice for Gabby and to see this through, I, you know, I always recommend it. And it was something that Harris Faulkner, I felt like she had to give me permission early on that it's, it's okay to have those creature comforts for myself because this is, we don't know how long the journey is in seeking justice and answers. Sometimes it's a marathon. Joe, sometimes it happens, you know, sometimes you have recovery of your loved one's remains and you have the perpetrator brought to justice and things are done fairly swiftly. But other times, you know, we, we don't really know what we're settling in for. So, um, you know, I'm really, I think that it's, it's, it's okay for us to, to tell you that it's, it's, it's okay to, to lay down your sword every once in a while and just nurture yourself a little so you can remain so strong for Gabby in seeing this through the end and seeing justice for her. And, you know, other family members will help support and take up that, that caring for other individuals so you can really, really focus and stay proactive. And I think it's so important what you're doing. Like what, what I mentioned at first, you know, when we first are experiencing these tragedies, we're reactive and we're just reacting to everything. But now I feel like, Joe, you've taken it to being proactive. And that is the best step that I think that any, any person can do in searching for their loved one and getting justice and answers, so. It brings up a really good point, Beth, about the, um, the various stages along the way. And I don't know, Joe, where you and your family are at this point. I know, in, you know during the funeral, Gabby's stepfather mentioned how hard it was to come back from Wyoming um, because he wanted to bring you know, Gabby back to you. And you, I would assume, have to be in the dark um, about some things because this is an open investigation. Help me to understand how you're managing sort of where you fall into the priority list of being informed about every step of the way. We want answers and we know we're not going to get the answers right away, uh, especially with the, with the way current events are, as you know, as, as they are this evening. So, well, again, you know, we're we're a group of four. It's not this. It's not just me. And a lot of parents don't have that, you know. So, um, the fact that we are four, we get to bounce bounce things off each other and lean on each other. Um, you know, especially if someone's having a bad day, and you can you can notice that. We're like, you know what? Why don't we take a step back and, and, and we'll reevaluate and make sure things are, you know, are okay. So we're trying to stay focused on things for, um, for the foundation. You know, how can we honor Gabby? You know, making, making sure it's not meaningless to us, you know, and, you know, f making sure that we can uh, make a difference and, and make that change that we need to have happen. I know it's for a selfish reason, but, you know, the outcome is still the same, that we want to, you know, help and save people. You know, we think uh, we think we can actually make a big difference. There's already starting to be a lot of a lot of talk, um, a lot of people that are finding out uh, ways to make plans to make sure that they leave in a safe, uh, leave the, uh, their significant others in a safe manner. And you know, that's that's huge for us. You know, we just want to get we want to do more for that. Uh, we're seeing um, people tag uh, Gabby Petito, and uh, their cases are start coming, you know, more to the top and being investigated and as they should be, you know, and you know, every person should have uh, the type of coverage or at least a close to it, you know, and um, we're starting to see that more and more, which is which is exciting. But we got a lot of work to do us, uh, the networks, you know, if there's a network that's not dedicating a few moments to this or or longer as it should be, um, you know, and that's. You know, that's, we should be writing, you know, as social media, tell them this is what we want to do. This is what we want to see. We want to make sure these kids come home uh, and we want them home quick. So things like that, uh, making that change is, is going to be huge. And for you, you know, there's still the, the you're in the middle of the process of, of even trying to, um, 
even trying to memorialize Gabby and and have a, a funeral. I, you know, you had your memorial, but are, do you know if you're getting close to being able to bring her home and and actually have that final um, funeral for for Gabby? Uh, we hope so. You know, we got some. Uh, I guess got some more things that they're working out. I have no idea, um, but they do tell us it will be soon, uh, sooner than later, uh, which is exciting and. We just want to get together and escort her home properly, and this way we can we can do what we need to do as the as the four of us, and and and, and really really process it together, and really lean on each other because that's what's going to need to happen. When we come back after the break, John Walsh, I want you to weigh in on that process of um, where you fall in the priority of, of police information during an investigation, during an active investigation, an open investigation that can sometimes go on for days and weeks and months and even years. John Walsh, Aaron Runyon, Beth Holloway, and Joe Petito after the break. Even though I miss her every day, her love is with me forever, and she does continue to teach me every day, and that's, that's what you have to hold on to. That is Erin Runyon, one of my guests tonight, visiting the site in 2012 where the body of her daughter, Samantha, was found. 10 years earlier. Um, Aaron, for the rest of us watching that, it's very, very hard to process how you did it, how you make it through that, how you made the 10 years. And I, it's a simple question. I don't know if there's an easy answer. Does it get easier? Oh, I, yes, definitely, definitely. The, those first, what, what the Petito family is going through right now, the first several months, it's so surreal. It, losing your child in a sudden death is incredibly difficult to handle. And for it to be a violent death is a whole nother layer. And then you add the international interest and the media and all of the questions coming at you from every possible source it's it's overwhelming and i mean i remember very vividly thinking it's like i was walking underwater like the the sounds were muffled the visual everything was gray um you know it it it's it takes a a long time to process this and yes you get better at it you definitely do you learn how to anticipate triggers um and i you you will learn I really tried hard. I had to really focus for my young children at home um, to be able to think about my child in a way that reminded me of her joy and not just how she was taken and not just that she was gone, but to, to be able to remember them in a way that brings you back to the present and the gift that they will always be in your life, that it never goes away. And they're, they're, they, they are with us in their own way. John Walsh, um, I, I was just looking at the math and it, it was just in July, it was 40 years since Adam disappeared. I, can you reflect on what Aaron just said about the change and, and how, you, how you as a person change, how the people around you change and, and what strength you gathered to get to these 40 years? You're, you're changed irreparably. Both these ladies have been through it. I, I mean, my, I know them very well. I know their cases. Natalie Holloway is a case that haunted me for years. I, I mean, here's Beth. She didn't get a body to bury. She did, and nobody, the jerk that mur murdered her daughter is in jail in Chile for another murder of another young woman. He escaped from Aruba. The cops let him leave Aruba. The FBI messed up so bad, and he left and went to another country. So I know these two women very well, but I, I want to say this, a, a couple things to Joe, and I want to say to Gabby's uh, 
mother and her new husband and, and Joe and his new wife. Um, you know, you, you got to check everybody in the family. There's always a grandma and a grandpa, an uncle, an older sibling, a younger sibling that's hurting just as bad, almost as bad as you are. But nobody wants to make daddy or mommy cry. I've talked to thousands of parents of murdered children, and, I, and they always say the same thing. I overlooked the other kids. I overlooked the big brother. I overlooked I didn't get help for them. No one wants to stir it up for mom or dad, so you have to reach out into the family. And, and Aaron was right. You have to celebrate those years that you had, Gabby, and, and they celebrate the years they had those two girls. I was lucky to have Adam for six years. He made my whole life. He was our first child, and we've had other children since, and I'm a great, proud grandpa. But you're changed irreparably, and I say to them, you celebrate her life. Celebrate. Don't don't think about the one day that a horrible weasel coward who's out there running around uh, and hiding uh, that, that did something terrible in your life. I, I, you know, people gave us bad advice. Take down his toys. Take down his pictures. You'll forget that da, 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 time heals all. You're, you're hurt irreparably. You've got a chunk of your heart taken out and birthdays and Christmases makes it bleed. But you survive through. I I was on the path for justice, and I hope Joe and his whole family doesn't have to wait for this creep to be caught and tried. It took me 27 years to get a hold of the files in Adam's case. Talk about waiting for justice. I know all about waiting for justice. That's why I say we got to keep the pressure on this creep and get him before he hurts somebody else. But I say to these families, celebrate the lives of those children, celebrate their birthdays, the holidays. They were a part, a wonderful part of your life. Don't dwell on the bad day. But, but you, and, and worry about all the other relatives that loved, loved them so much. But I will say this, it's not about closure, Joe. You're on the same path I am, and men treat it differently than women do. We got all that testosterone, and we want to go out and find the bastard who did it. We want to kill him, all those things that go through your head. And it can't happen. I met a father who felt the same way I did, and he had a gun, and the cops came and brought him. He came to hear me speak, and I thought about it, and I don't know how I spurred it up, but I said, if you could have your son dead, back, for one minute, because you're here trying to kill the two guys at this trial with a gun, you're drunk, you're going to shoot him in the courtroom. If your son could come back for one minute, he would say, Dad, don't do this. Don't do this. You can't kill somebody else and make it better for me. Celebrate my life and make sure that you remember me for what I was. So, Joe, you're going to be on a long journey. I hope it isn't pay, pay, as painful as Beth Holloway's. She hasn't gotten any, forget closure, she hasn't gotten any justice yet. Aaron got some justice, and again, her case was a repeat offender that I've been talking about forever, a guy whose charges were dropped for molesting other little girls. I, I can only think her daughter might be alive if the criminal justice system worked better for the bad guys that prey upon children. But it's a long haul, but you know what? You have a lot of people supporting you. This, is, this case has grabbed the American public, and we have to keep it alive as much as since Elizabeth Smart. I mean, it's really strange because I deal with and profile all kinds of missing women, and, and nobody profiles black and Hispanic missing women. It's always the blonde girls and the blonde Adam Walsh, Elizabeth Smart. That's a huge problem. I've always, always been colorblind and, and America's Most Wanted on my new show. Nobody cares about those missing women. They don't get the publicity. But Joe, you got a good network around you, and, and, and you got support. Celebrate her birthday and stay on that hunt, because I'll tell you what, after 27 years, it made a lot of difference to my wife and I, Ravey and I, and our grown children. That ended the chapter. We knew the guy that killed Adam and six other people. He finally paid his price. So you got to stay strong, but be good to each other. Be really good to each other. Yeah. When we come back after the break, there is that other question in the legal justice system, and that is, does the death penalty help bring a sense of justice? And again, that word keeps creeping in, closure. What exactly would it mean? Does it mean? Has it meant? We're back right after this. We are back with Aaron Runyon, Beth Holloway, John Walsh, and Joe Petito. This is a group uh, that is unlike any other. It is a group not one of us ever wants to belong to, and they didn't either, and yet they are there, they are together. Joe, I, I keep thinking as I hear this incredible, um, you know, an insightful wisdom from, from the people on the screen right now. I'm hoping it is helpful at a time when I think this is, this is, this is invaluable information. Is it, um, is, it, is it something you can pocket away? 
It is. It's actually one of the reasons that I, I, I wanted to come on. You know, uh, I just, like I said before, I just flew into Florida today. I mean, in fact, I think I got in at about 8, 8.30 this evening. Um, it's one of the reasons that I, that I, I wanted to do it because I wanted to get that inside. I, um, I actually want to get their contact information to, you know, afterwards too. I can, you know, maybe possibly bounce things off of, you know, when I am seeing something or, or if I have a question. Because this is, um, it's just like nothing I've ever heard, you know, nothing I've ever seen, nothing I've ever felt. And uh, there's only a few people that can share it. And it's the people that are on the screen and I'll, be, I'll forever be indebted to them. I have a strong feeling that um, as soon as we sign off, those phone numbers will be in your inbox. And I, I feel like I already have consent from, <laughs> from the three guests on the screen. Um, you yes. all have been so magnanimous, not just to Joe Petito, but to others as well. I've been in this business 33 years. I've interviewed all three of you several times. And you always manage to just, um, in the face of adversity, display such remarkable grace and composure. And so I'm, I'm also very thankful that you agreed to do this for Joe Petito and his family. I, I wanna put a question on the screen if I can. It, it came from a social media follower, Mike K on Facebook. And I think, Beth, I think you'd be really good on this one. Um, he asks, what have you learned about the world that the rest of us don't know, Beth? What have you learned about the world that the rest of us don't know? Oh, I mean, if we're talking like in reference of, of, of tragedies and, and injustice and, and just maddening things that can happen and, and without our control and, and just you know, it's it's like we said, like even John said when we started out, I mean, no parent can picture themselves being in Joe's shoes, John's shoes, Aaron's shoes, or my shoes. And it's it's something that, and even that we're all in these similar tragedies, I can't even imagine to being in Joe's shoes. You know, he's he's still looking for his, his daughter's killer, his perpetrator. And so, you know, we, we all have similar tragedies, but we all have different outcomes and different, we're in different levels of it. But, and it's, it's, it's just, it's maddening that you can't get to those answers. You just feel like, and I'm sure Joe, you, you get into that mode to where you feel like you're about to get the answer. You're about to get it. Seems like it's always around the corner. And then you just keep turning and turning and it's not there. But you, you just don't want to lose hope. And I've always just tried to really embrace hope with every anonymous tip or lead to feel like it's getting us closer and closer to answers and the justice that we are seeking. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough journey. And like John Walsh said, it could be at 27 years, you know, five years, two years. But here's one thing I've learned. In just the four of us in our tragedy, whatever we've experienced, I do now know that we all hurt the same in the tragedy that we're experiencing. No matter, no matter how long the tragedy has lasted, we, we all hurt the same because that is the reference we have of pain in that particular moment of tragedy that we're experiencing. So that is the commonality that we all share as victims who have their loved ones, victims of crimes and such heinous Joe, crimes. Joe, I saw you nodding. It looked as though you really thought that resonated, Joe. Tell me. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of emotions that are going through you, you know, and like this is such a rush and not taking the time and all this other stuff, but it's, uh, it's a roller coaster, you know, and yeah, I, I don't know how I'm going to be tomorrow and all this other stuff, but it's, it's good to know that, like I said, I'm on the right path. And if I can stay focused with the foundation and stuff, I think good things will come. If I stay out of that rage and anger and stuff, um, you know, I, you guys have, have gone through these range of emotions. You're still going through these range of emotions. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's, you know, still, but uh, at least there are people out there that understand that I can bounce questions off of, because I'll tell you, Sometimes you just try and make sense of it, and there's, there's nothing you can say. There's nothing that, can, that you can make sense in your head about it. So, so I appreciate it. When we come back after the break, there are Ashley. four foundations that these four... Oh, go ahead. Just quickly, John. We're just going to fit in a quick break. Go ahead, John. 
I was going to say two things. I found out that most of the people on the planet are good, but there are some really evil, horrible people. America, the richest, most powerful country on the world, we're number one in sex trafficking of children and women. So there's a lot of really bad people out there. And I know Joe is busting to ask me. You can ask the cops. They, they, I love cops, but they need to talk to you and tell you what's going on. There are two women here whose cases were so, so, Beth Holloway's case was almost as badly handled as Adams. If I could roll the clock back, I'd be right there saying, you got to tell me. I've passed laws that the cops have to, and the DAs, they have to talk to you. You need to know, you're not going to tell anybody else. You're not going to say it to the media and blow the case. And if they made mistakes, you have the right to ask them. How do they let this guy get out the front door, the number one suspect, the FBI and these local cops? The guy went on the run way early before they ever knew he was in the house. Joe, you have the rights. You can sit down and say, my wife and my, my new wife and, and Gabby's mother, we need to know what's going on here. We, need to, we don't need to find it out on the media. Treat us with some, uh, on television, treat us with some dignity. And I, I can't wait to meet you, Joe, because I've walked in those shoes. You know, I've walked well, in your shoes. Happen. There's a lot we're you We're going to make that happen. Yep. Without question, we're going to make that happen. When we come back after the break, also, I want to highlight the four remarkable foundations that these four remarkable people have launched and are launching, and how you can be a part back after this. Welcome back. Uh, Aaron Runyon, Beth Holloway, John Walsh, and Joe Petito are still with me. Aaron, I have this question for you about the death penalty because the killer of your child was given the death penalty, uh, but he's really serving life in prison. Is that helpful? Is it hurtful? Does it make a difference? I, you know, um, I, I think that it's really important to focus on the person that you lost, um, and not get too stuck hoping for a certain outcome um, in terms of what justice looks like. Because that word becomes very nebulous in the whole process. Mm -hmm. It takes so long to get to the end of the trial, the sentencing. Um, and for me, it doesn't matter. It, what matters is that he is never going to be able to hurt another child. That matters. Um, and in the state of California, it, the death penalty is very rarely used. Um, but we'll see yeah. if, that, if that sentence holds. Joe, but as long as I he can never about, hurt another um, child, that's all I care about. Amen. Amen. Joe, I've got about 40 seconds until this show goes to black, but I want you to have the last word about what you'd like the legacy of Gabby to be. I'd like to see cases of missing children of all colors rise to the top. I, it, it doesn't, you know, pick a story, exploit the story, push it out. It's, it's, it's we have to make that change. Um, and to be honest, we got to do better with teaching our, our young ones, uh, boys and girls, you know, on domestic violence and, and signs how to act better. We got to be better. We have to make the change yeah. and it's going to start with them. Yeah. And, and we, we're going to make a big difference. Joe Petito, John Walsh, Beth Holloway, Aaron Runyon, God bless all four of you. Thank you for doing this, and I will connect all four of you after the program. Thank you.